This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. In this video, I'm going to go over some basics of exponential functions, including the base and the exponent, the equation of asymptote, and the domain and the range. Before looking at functions, let's just review what a base and an exponent is. If we have b to the n, b is called the base, and n up here is called the exponent. Now you have to be careful. The base is simply the number directly to the left and below the exponent. All right, so for this first one, we have 3 to the fourth power. The base is 3. The exponent is 4. Now for this next one, we have to be careful. The base is only, let's see if I do this right, only the 5. If you want, you could think of this as negative 1 times 5 cubed, or you could think of it as the opposite of 5 cubed. But be very careful, the minus sign is not part of the base. So the base in this problem is 5, and the exponent is 3. All right, next one x to the sixth, the base then would be x, and the exponent would be 6. Next one, the base will be 4, the exponent will be x. And this last one, same problem, this minus sign is not part of the base. Okay, So again, the base is simply the 8. Okay, So I'm just going to show the base, highlight all of them. So the base here is 8, and the exponent is x plus 1. Now, we're going to be dealing with problems of the form um, of the last two, where you have a base, like 4 or 8, or it could be a fraction. Bases are not going to be negative, and, the, and then we'll have an exponent that has a variable in it. It might just be x, it might be x plus 1, it might be 3x minus 9, it could be anything. You could have a, a, a problem that would not be an exponential function because of the way we define it, but you could have something like negative 4 to the third power and then the base in this case really is negative 4. There's a parentheses around it so that you make sure, whoops, sorry, do that just right, the highlighter. The base has a parentheses around it so you realize that the base is 4, not negative 4. So look at the difference between that, negative 4 to the third power, and over here where I have a minus sign, minus 5 cubed, the negative sign is not in parentheses, so the base is only 5. So for this particular problem over here, the base could be a negative number, and then the exponent would be 3, but we aren't going to do any problems where the base is going to be negative on this video. So let's look at this function, f of x equals 2 to the x. And of course, remember, you could write f of x as y equals 2x. And let's say that you want to identify the base the exponent, then the base would be 2, and the exponent would be x in this case. Now, what you can do to graph it is plug in a bunch of um, ordered pairs. So you have to plug some numbers in for x. And notice that we can always put any number we want in for an exponent. So x can be any number at all. And let's choose some positive and negative ones. So let's choose negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And if we want to know what 2 to the x is, then that would be 2 to the negative 3, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the first, I'm sorry, 2 to the 0, 2 to the first, 2 squared, and 2 cubed, which all, which those could be uh, simplified. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth. So this gives me an ordered pair on the graph, negative 3, 1 eighth, for instance. Now, similarly, you can go through all of these 
This will be 1 over 2 squared, which will be 1 fourth, giving me the ordered pair. When x is negative 2, y or f of x is 1 fourth, etc. And you could fill all of these in, like I'm doing. Remember, 2 to the 0 power is 1. Any number to the 0 power is 1, as long as the base is not 0. So this is just the ordered pair 0, 1, for instance. And the rest of these are a little bit easier. So I've got these ordered pairs. So before going on, and before graphing this, let's just think about what the domain and range is going to be. For the domain, it's always all real numbers unless there's some sort of restriction that you can't put in for x. But x is in the exponent, and the x component can be any number. So the domain, oops, domain will be all real numbers, which is negative infinity to infinity. Now the range is a little bit trickier. Those are all the values that y can be. And if we look at our values of y, just check out what's going on here. When I started at negative 3, I've got 1 eighth. When x was negative 2, it was 1 fourth. When x is negative 1, was 1 half. So I keep getting positive numbers, right? As I get to be larger numbers, notice that 2, of the, 2 to the x gets bigger. 1, 2, 4, 8. So you're taking 2 and raising it to any exponent, it'll always be a positive number. Now think about if this exponent was like negative 100, it would be 1 over 2 to the hundredth, which is some huge, 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 huge number in the denominator, right? 1 over some huge number. It's still positive. It's not negative and it's not 0. So you might get really close to 0 for one of your y coordinates here. And you might get really large, right? For instance, if x was positive 100, we'll get some huge number. But it will always be positive. It'll get close to 0, but it will not ever be 0, and it will never be smaller than 0. So the range, there is no smallest number, but it gets really close to 0, and it can get as big as possible. If you graph these ordered pairs, and you'll also let's say you're using Desmos or you graph, you know, 100 order pairs. Also, it will look like all the x values are taken on from the left to the right. There's no holes anywhere. And then the range will always be um, above, all the y values will be above the x-axis, which is why the range is from 0 to infinity. Now, if we took those order pairs and we graphed them, I have seven order pairs on here. I have 3, 8, 2, 4, 1, 2, 0, 1, negative 1, 1 half, negative 2, 1 fourth, negative 3, 1 eighth. And actually, I can't really get much closer, but if I went to negative 4, it would be 1 16th. I know this is actually getting lower, but, you know, freehand, it's kind of hard for me to do that. But the idea is this goes to the left indefinitely, and it never crosses the x-axis. If you have a curve that gets closer and closer to a line as it gets goes in infinitely to the left or infinitely to the right, so very small numbers for x or very small numbers for y, which is what exactly what happens in all exponential functions of this form, f of x equals something like 2 to the x or 5 to the x or 1 half to the x. If there's a line that the curve gets closer to, it's called an asymptote. So an asymptote is a line. So a horizontal asymptote is a line that a curve gets infinitely close to, and actually, all exponential functions of this form, f of x equals b to the x, or y equals b to the x, so in this case, f of x equals 2 to the x, or y equals 2 to the x, they all have a horizontal asymptote. And in fact, that horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. That is the line that it gets infinitely close to. And it has an equation, oops, sorry, has an equation. The equation of the x-axis is y equals 0, because at that point, all the ordered pairs have a y-coordinate 
of zero. Now, not all exponential functions look exactly like this blue one, right? like this blue line for y equals 2 to the x. It might be below the x-axis. If there's, let's say, a negative number in front of the 2, not in parentheses, the base would still be 2. Or it might be starting up here at negative 3, positive 8, and going down. So there's, there's other possibilities. But if it's of this form, either y equals some number to the x, okay, it's going to be above the x-axis. Why don't you put a minus sign in front of it? That's going to change it slightly. Um, but the x-axis will always be the asymptote, and it has an equation which is y equals 0. So this is a little bit different, y equals negative 2 to the x. Notice the base is still 2, but you're going to have y be a negative number because it's the opposite of some positive number since we know that 2 to the x is a positive number always. So, of course, when you put a minus sign in front of it, it will be a negative number. And you can go ahead and plug all those order pairs in for yourself. You do the same order pairs we did on the previous page, right? Except all the y values would be negative. If I had y equals, oops, sorry. If I had y equals negative 2 to the x, for instance, this order would be, order pair would be negative 3, negative 1 eighth. And this would be negative 2, negative 1 fourth, etc. This one would be 3, negative 8. So if I were going to graph that, it would look like this. All right, so notice everything is now below the x-axis, but of course I still have the same horizontal asymptote, which is the x-axis and the equation is still y equals 0. For this red one, what would the domain be? Well, the domain still could be anything, right? So it's negative infinity to infinity. But what are the y values here? The y values are always negative this time because of this minus sign out in front. So there's no smallest number, so it goes from negative infinity and it goes up until it gets, well, it gets close to the asymptote, right, of this line, the y equals 0. So it doesn't exactly touch it. So it goes from negative infinity to infinity. Look at the difference here for y equals 2 to the x. Oops, sorry. Having issues on my computer. All right, here we are again. So notice that for y equals 2 to the x, my domain was negative infinity to infinity. And also if it's negative 2 to the x, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. But the range is a little different. The range of y equals 2 to the x is above the x-axis, so all the from 0 to infinity. The range of y equals negative 2 to the x, the range is, the y values are below the x-axis, so it goes from negative infinity to 0. Both of them have the exact same um, asymptote. It's the x-axis, and the equation of the x-axis is y equals 0. All right, what about if it would have been y equals 2 to the x, let's say, minus 3. Just want you to think about this for a minute. If instead of just y equals 2 to the x, it was y equals 2 to the x minus 3, then what would happen to all these y coordinates? Well, we know what 2 to the x is. I would be subtracting 3 of all, from all of them. So in that case, imagine every point here on the blue curve, it's actually going to be 3 places lower. So of course, that's going to change our asymptote. For instance, this ordered pair here, 0, 1, is really now going to be down here at 0, negative 2. Right? So when you put in 0 for x, you would get 2 to the 0, which is 1, minus 3 is negative 2. So that will change your asymptote. So let's just look at that. Let's just go through a couple ideas here. Domain. Hmm. Domain. Are there any restrictions on x? No, always the domain 
for an exponential function is negative infinity to infinity. The range here is the tricky part. So before when we had y equals 2 to the x, let's go back and look at, it's this blue curve. Right here, that's y equals 2 to the x, but now we're going to subtract 3. So what happens? All right, so I know what 2 to the x was. I just subtracted 3 to get my new y values. And if I plug those in here, I see what's going on. As x gets really small, yeah, looks like I'm getting close to negative 3, right? I had negative 2 and a half when x was negative 1, negative 2 and 3 fourths, negative 2 and 7 eighths. I'm just going to have a tiny number, minus 3, really close to 0, but not quite 0. 0 minus 3 would be negative 3. This gives me a, an asymptote, which I'm going to dot down here. It gets really close to this horizontal line. And that's a line, right? And the form of that line is, well, y is always negative 3 down there, okay? So the range, you notice, all the blue, it's above negative 3, so it doesn't touch it. But if we look at the picture, it's negative 3, but goes up forever. And then the asymptote, let's write the equation, All right, what's that line? It's y equals negative 3. I'm sorry, yes, y equals negative 3. So what happens with this minus 3, you notice out here hanging, that changes things, right? Instead of this being from 0 to infinity, it's going to be negative 3 to infinity. Instead of the equation of the asymptote being y equals 0, it's going to be y equals negative 3. It's still a horizontal line, etc. All right, so I hope that helps. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.